today's vlog. Today's vlog is a little different. Um, so over the last week, as I've been trying to live vlog every single day, um, I've tried to mix up the subjects so there's something for everybody. Today I want to talk about one thing, my dirty little secret. And my dirty little secret, well, this gives you a bit of a hint. So it's lunchtime, uh, we got to go and run a quick errand and pick up some dog food. Um, one of the one of the things that you have to get used to if you live in the country is occasionally you will run into wildlife. Um, so today uh, I went outside to fill up our dog food containers. We keep our dog food normally in a secure plastic bin outside our house to keep it nice and cool. Uh, I opened the top uh, which wasn't fitted properly and noticed there were a couple of mice in the bottom that were eating their way through the dog food. Um, so rather than risk there any form of contamination so we had to just dump the rest of it. So I'm now heading off to the pet shop to pick up some dog food. So this is my dirty little secret. I am a collector um, of old sort of pre-PC computers. Um, just about everything on this shelf here, uh, and this is just a small part of my collection, is sort of pre the 8088 computer. In fact, uh, maybe some of them sort of just crossed over with the first PCs, but generally they are all very different. You can't run software um, from on any of these. Well, actually you can on this one and this one, but only because this was just a cheaper version of this computer. Um, as you can see, this one's running here. Um, we can actually run the program, the usual hello world. But all of these work. So a lot of these I buy on eBay for very small amounts of money. Uh, and generally to get them working is a very, very simple job. It's usually a power supply problem. Um, you know, literally a couple of cents or pennies for a couple of uh, capacitors from a shop like Maplin. Um, and I can get them up and running again. So uh, yeah, this is my dirty little secret. Um, there are many more computers in my collection than these. This is just a small, not small portion of them. Um, but uh, yeah, they, there's things here where some people, some of you are old enough will remember from your childhood. Um, the sort of Commodore VIC-20, the predecessor to the Commodore 64. You've got a Commodore 16 over here. Now, this thing's a little rarer, um, although they look sort of very similar. This was actually a cheaper version of the Commodore 64, which was a very successful computer in the 80s. A lot of school kids wanted it because there were a lot of good games for it. Um, the Sinclair computers, there's a Spectrum here, and there's also the Sinclair QL here, um, which was the Sinclair's first sort of version of building a business computer. And the idea was you had these little tape cartridges that went in there. Uh, that gave you access to a spreadsheet program, a word processor, and some other uh, things. Oh, there we go, I just knocked the cable out. Um, but actually my favourite of all is this. This is a Jupiter Ace. This is, uh, as you can see, it's very, they're very similar in design. They're kind of simple plastic case with a simple rubber keyboard. Um, the fundamental difference was this was really easy to learn to program. This ran the basic operating system, sorry, the basic language that uh, most of these computers, like all of these computers run the basic interpreters. They give you a language that you can write simple little programs like this one. This came with a language called Forth. And, well, certainly when I was at school, nobody taught forth. So you can imagine if you got one of these for Christmas and you sat down and you thought, oh, I learned to program at school and it just didn't make any sense. It's the equivalent of this being in English and this being in French, it's a completely different language. So why are these things so important? Why do I keep them? Well, yes, there's a little piece of nostalgia in there. Um, spent many a, a happy piece of my childhood playing with one of these things. but. They taught children um, a couple of very key skills. They taught children logical thinking, how to think through a problem one step at a time and take the output from one step and pass it on to the next step. And this teaches you how to troubleshoot. Now, it may be that you learn to write small programs on your computer, but that way of thinking and of being able to break a problem down into small steps 
and take one piece, move it forward, and then if it doesn't work, to stop and analyze it and say, well, why didn't that work? What do I need to change to make this work to get me to the next step? And that's really all computer programming was at the time. It was a simple sort of script that you ran from top to bottom. And over time, you did learn different programming techniques uh, that allowed you to, to, to do, do things in different ways. But generally, it was top to bottom. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And that taught children to think through a problem. It taught children to, to analyze what was going on and help them develop that logical troubleshooting skill that would serve them later in life. Now, the type of programming that these old machines used um, really is no use in the modern world. Uh, these are pre-object orientated languages uh, and the ways that computer programs are developed now are very different. The languages are very different. But that skill, that logical troubleshooting is still key today. You still need that to be able to become a computer programmer. So let's say you want to, uh, to help your child or, your, or a member of your family to develop their skill set in programming. Now they may not want to be a programmer when they're, they're a bit older, but the skill set, as I said earlier, the logical, logical problem solving, is something that will serve them well for their entire life. Now the days of sitting with lots and lots of code and typing it all into your computer are long gone. Um, there's a great new application from Apple for the iPad called Swift Playgrounds. The Swift Playgrounds is free of charge and introduces children of all ages, even as old as me, uh, to the concepts of programming. So you can learn the concepts in a fun environment. Um, there are multiple different lessons and different things to do, and it will help build though, that, that skill set of logical problem solving. And who knows, maybe your, uh, your, your children will go on to become you know, world famous programmers and develop the next big thing um, on the platform. If you're finding these vlogs interesting, then why not subscribe? That way you'll always make sure you get the latest episodes. I'm going to try and put out an episode a day. Um, that may not always be possible, but I will certainly give it my best efforts. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Um, if you do give me a thumbs down, or if you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, please do leave me a comment. Let me know why. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't, and I will certainly try to make them more entertaining. Um, and I'm sure, given all the requests I've had already, that I'll have to bring Scooby back in the very near future. Oh, incoming call from the wife.